All right, so push notifications is a very common concept when it comes to native apps, but we can also leverage the same concept on the web. For most of us out there, we almost always have a browser running in the background, be it on a mobile phone or your desktop. So if that is the case, then we can also use the same notification capabilities on the web using service workers. Let me show you how it's done. So there are essentially two kinds of notifications. One, as we already mentioned, is the push notification. And the second one is local notifications. Push notifications typically come from a server when some event has happened. Like for instance, if you have new mails in your inbox, you ideally should get a notification even if you do not have the app open. And then there are local notifications which don't really serve a purpose. You perform an action while actively using an app or a website and it throws a notification at you. There are several articles and case studies calling local notifications bad for UX because why would I want to see notifications when I'm actively using the app? The idea for notifications is to draw the user back to the app when they are not on it, which is what we can achieve using push notifications. We'll go through both of these examples in the coming videos, but primarily we'll be focusing on push notifications. Now, the required APIs and components for this to work will be the service worker API, the notification API and the push API. The reason why we'll need a service worker is that we do not want our main thread to be listening for any new events from the backend. We want a different thread running in the background that's going to notify the clients when something happens. So service worker will help us with that. The notification API, as the name suggests, is responsible for creating notifications and displaying them to the client. The push API gives web applications the ability to receive messages pushed to them from a server. Now the basic flow is going to look something like this. We ask for permission from the user using the notification API's request permission method. If the permission is granted, we use our service worker to subscribe to a push service using the push API. Our service worker now listens for push events and on arrival of a push event, the service worker awakens and uses the information from the push message to show a notification using the notification API. On the other hand, if the permission is denied, there is little that we can do here, but we'll somehow try to handle this case in the code as well. So we have a very simple folder structure here. It has an HTML file and a JavaScript file. Inside the JavaScript file, we'll first need to check if there's support for the service worker API. So I'll just create a function called check permission. And this is just going to see if service worker is present inside the navigator object that's part of the window object. So this will tell us whether there's support for service worker for the particular browser. If the browser does not support the service worker API, then we'll simply throw an error. Now we'll need to register the service worker and get the notification permission from the browser. We've already done the registration part in the previous video, so let's quickly do that. I'll create a separate function for the registration. It's going to be an async function. Inside this function, I'll create a registration instance. And this is going to call the register method inside this will be passing the name of the service worker file so in our case it's going to be service worker.js sw.js and at the end i'll simply return the registration instance at the bottom here i'll call both the functions check permission and register service worker now if i open this inside the browser before that we'll actually need to create a service worker file so let me just create sw.js inside the service worker file i'll just simply attach a console log statement now if i go inside the browser i ideally should be seeing the console log statement okay so the reason why i don't see this message is because i have not yet imported the script inside my html file so let me just do that now if i go back to the browser you'll see the message now, ideally, you should be seeing this console log message here, but if that is not the case, then you can go to the applications tab service worker section and you'll find this see all registrations button here. If you click on it, you'll find all the service workers that you have registered in the past. Just look for the current service worker version and you'll find the option to inspect right next to that worker. So 
our current service worker version is 946 i'll just search for 946 here is our current service worker and if i click on inspect if i go to the console i'll find this console log message also since service workers are registered only once now if you refresh the page you won't be able to see this message but if you make an update to the service worker file itself then it will re-register the updated service worker and you'll see the message again so if i change this to service worker one let's say and i go back to the browser yeah you see the message again now let's write a function that's going to ask for notification permission from the client we'll use the notification api that's present on the window object so let's just create a separate function here we'll call it request notification permission it's going to be an async function i'll create a permission instance and the method that we are going to use is request permission that's present inside the notification object this notification object is present inside the window object so it's part of the browser's global scope now the permission that i get will either be granted or denied so this condition here is going to run if the permission is not granted i'll simply throw an error before even doing this i should actually check if the notification api is supported inside the browser so let me just check if notification is present inside the window object if that's not the case then return an error inside this request function i'll also add a dummy notification block so if the permission is granted then we'll just create a new notification instance i'll be using the notification constructor itself and i'll pass in hello world let me just call this function right after the registration so request yeah actually before even calling this method let me just comment this out and inside the browser i'll just see if there's any notification permission here so we do not have any notification sections here under permissions now i'll go back and uncomment this now you can see that we get this pop-up saying that show notifications i'll allow once i click on allow in the notification pop-up you see the notification message that we created at the bottom right of the screen now if i click here at the top you'll find the notification permission and i can at any time set or unset this permission now ideally you should not directly request for notification permission on your web page imagine if you have a blog on your personal website and you want people to be notified whenever you post a new blog having an option to enable notifications somewhere on your website is a better user experience because there might be users who are just one-time visitors on your web app and if you directly show them the notification pop-up right when they land on the web page it can get a bit weird a more utility driven example is when you have an online booking app like for instance an air travel platform again the notification updates make sense only in particular scenarios like getting updates when the flight is delayed or boarding time reminder or something like that all of this comes after you book a ticket so it can be prompted in the later part of the user journey showing a pop-up right when the user has landed in the home page of the website is of no use and the user might seem confused as to what notifications they will be getting even before doing something on the platform so yeah keep that in mind when you are adding a notification related implementation in your project we'll be doing something similar i'll attach a button to our app and inside its on click handler i'll call the request permission method so let me remove the invocation from here inside our index.html file i'll create a button and its on click handler will call now you'll notice one thing here you can see here that the notification permission is currently disabled so ideally when i click on this enable notifications button it should show me a pop-up and prompt me to either allow or block the notifications but when i click on the enable notifications button i just get an error saying that notification permission is not granted so i am getting the error that we were throwing inside this function i am getting this error so it is running the function 
but it's not triggering a pop-up asking to enable notifications. That's because Chrome stores your web app's preferences and you can only update it from here. So you can always reset your permissions. So if I click on this and it will ask me to reload the page. Now when I click on the enable notifications button, you get the pop-up. So this is basically a one-time use button and you can hide it once the user has set their permissions because after that it's of no use anyway. To do that, you can access the state of the notification permission from the notification object. So if I try to get the current permission, you'll see that it says default. That's because we don't have the notification permission set yet. I'll just click on allow. And now if I try to get the permission, it should be granted. Yeah. So based on this state, you can either hide or display this button. Now I'll remove the button and the notification block from this function. Our goal is to have the service worker send a notification whenever something happens on the server. So triggering a notification inside this script file doesn't make sense. Now to make the service worker send a notification, we need access to the service worker registration. Even though I am returning the registration from the register function, it won't be able to access it in the global scope because the register function is asynchronous. So if I get the registration instance and store it inside a variable over here, so const registration is whatever I'm returning from this function. So this registration instance. Now, if I try to call the show notification method that's present on this instance, you'll see that we are not even getting it in the IntelliSense. So this definitely is not working, but I'll still show you what happens. If I save this and go back to the browser, you see that it says show notification on this registration instance is not a function. I'll try to console log this registration instance and you'll see that it's a promise. And the promise does not have the show notification method on it. So that's the reason why we get this error. I cannot even await directly in the global scope. So instead, I'll put all these checks inside another function. So I'll call it main. And this is again going to be an asynchronous function. I'll move the permission check, the registration and the show notification inside this function. Let me just await the response from the registration. Now that we have everything inside this function, I'll simply call it at the end. If I save this and go back to the browser, you see that we get an error, but this is a different error. The error here states that the show notification function that we have on this registration instance, it expects a parameter and we have not yet passed any parameters. So let's do that. The first one that we are going to pass is the title of the notification. So I'll set it to hello world. The second parameter is an options object and you can pass in a bunch of things inside this object. You can set an icon for the notification. You can set vibration patterns for the notification. You can also set extra text as part of the body for this notification. But for now, we'll just keep it simple and we'll just set the title. Now, if I save this, you can see here that we get the same notification with the title here. Hello world. So this works, which basically means that our service worker is now ready to send notifications. Now I'll stop here. I don't want this to get complicated. So there will be a follow up video in which we'll focus on how to get messages from the backend to the service worker and then display it to the client. Make sure to subscribe for that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.